All right, ladies and germs, junkyard here. I've seen several posts or threads about shimming stingers and tying stuff down, so I thought I'd do a quick walk around, maybe give somebody some guidance. A lot of you guys probably know this stuff, and this is just how I do it. Um, it has come from many, many years of doing it, so maybe I'll save somebody some frustration or whatever the first thing you'll notice is even though I'm not very wide my flags are wider than my load I do that simply so I can see the booster it gives me a better idea where the tail of my trailer is if I'm merging in traffic or if I'm making a tight turn or something like that I don't have to turn so sharp to see the booster the next thing is shimming a stinger when I do them I always start I almost never change this shim thick shim leave it alone you want those two plates your spreader bar and your flip axle if it's a two-piece stinger you want them pretty well parallel or if nothing else a little bit wider at the top but not much and then the one that becomes tricky because every trailer and every load is different is here between the trailer and the spreader bar this with imts i moved them enough i know i want the thick one and then that is the thinnest shim in the pack the other two are right here but basically the end result is you want you can see this is the third axle of the trailer how much bell you have showing and here on the flip axle you have pretty much the same amount of bell showing that's the goal that way everything rides good this trailer has a regulator so i can adjust it i like to run it a little lower than my trailer pressure which where i'm sitting right now can't see the damn shadow we're about dead even i prefer to leave my booster a little bit lower just because a dip or something i'd rather the booster not get overloaded or a clover leaf because it'll steer you around a clover leaf um i'm heavy enough here it's sure as hell not going to do that but you can see axle two looks pretty much like three and four number one looks good on these imts i got to crawl up on my outrigger board to keep my rotary from hitting you can see underneath here i don't know if i can show it to you or not but you can see that half circle's great that's because we didn't have enough room one time as far as the tie down stuff goes here's how i do the back of it i've got my chain here i got a binder here and then this is one of those big sling hook binders and then this is the sling hook on my chain all my chains with a couple exceptions our big sling hook or foundry hook whatever you want to call it on one end and a regular grab hook on the other so that gives me two i always chain to two different pads on the rails on the tracks this machine most of the everything we have we run them really really tight we have one machine that they're just slap or out so you pull a lot of slack out of the track down here on the other end pretty much the same deal but two chains and binders just because I leave I'm lazy I don't want to drag anything further back than I have to that's part of the reason I do that two binders and one chain deal but you can see same deal in this way they're separated they're easy to ratchet just remember do your bottom one first and keep your handle down like that so when you do your top one if your bottom when the handle was here you'd block it in with the top one and if you had to tighten them up you couldn't tighten them up even though these have a mechanical swing brake I always chain the upper illinois is one of the states that really likes to bust your chops over that and like our 3100s they have a shitty house lock i don't trust it so and if you got them crossed you can see stick something in there so the screws aren't rubbing on each other the way i like to tie these that's just how they fall together um you'll see on my neck trail king makes different heights of these if you need more height um i carry this plate because when i haul the 2500s if i leave this down and use this plate on the main one i can be legal height should i ever run the kansas turnpike or whatever um i think that's about it hopefully that helps um like i've said in some of the other posts you can't have too many on them and but they're no damn good if they're in the wrong spot but um, I did actually make a chain tray back here one idle day, so I really don't have any excuse for not using two chains and two binders back here, but it's just a, I'm a creature of habit. So, um, yes, I know the truck needs to be washed. I've been too busy. Don't forget to cover your exhaust. 
it's a good habit to get into. I know all these new machines with the particulate filters and all that bullshit, you're probably not going to hurt anything, but it's a habit I got into a long time ago and I've, I still do it. Um, I'd like to, to give myself a shout out for putting those decals on yesterday when we picked the machine up. That was really hard with the curve on the counterweight and all that stuff. I'm pretty decent at it. I do it dry. So if you screw up, you screw up. You get to buy new decals, but I've had enough practice. But this was the machine I took down on my thread. I had a picture of it. The truck was actually spotless back then. We had it repainted, had some updates done. So this was the end result. Just brought it back from Texas. I've never seen one where the boom, the rails for where the Kelly slides were so clean. We're going to have to grease the crap out of it because that, that ain't going to work. But anyway, um, here with this rig, I am right at what I can get a permit for, $160,000. Um, and if they weighed me, I might be a little bit off one end or the other, but I'm not over 160 so. But that's a kind of a rough guideline on the stinger obviously you don't want your stinger airbags aired way up and you but at the same time you don't want to over shim the stinger and if you're not running real heavy where your trailer was light it will steer you it will damn sure steer you either in a clover leaf or a like if you're pulling in a job site and there's a dip or something like that and uh i mean there's a lot to do in running a stinger like this it's not like a west coast trailer where you're pivoting on a trunnion and you have what you have and there's very little risk of being steered but even yet that'll happen so um i'm sure i'll get some snarky comments maybe not this is only going to go on the forum so uh and my youtube channel's private so uh i don't know i'll answer any questions anybody's got make more videos or if you tell me to quit making videos i'll stop too but at least i'm holding the phone the right way today so maybe you won't have to turn your computer monitor 90 degrees to watch it so uh we'll see you all around and i got three more rigs to move yet this week so maybe we'll make another video see y'all later